Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to homeopathic musing. Uh, first of all, I would like to wish everyone, every woman out there, a very happy Women's Day. So our today's session is dedicated to that. Uh, we'll be having some uh, few cases on women's common complaint and how homeopathy have helped them, helped in managing and treating them. So uh, today's speaker, Dr. Preeti Shah, Dr. Prajakta Vedya, Dr. Kamlesh Kakre and Dr. Charu Vahan uh, have come together and curated a course called From Classroom to Clinic. It is a small glipsy. Today's session is a small glipsy of the course. I'll quickly introduce all the four speakers shortly. Uh, so Dr. Preeti Shah and Dr. Prajakta Vedya are the co-founders of Healing Harmony, uh, who, uh, which is a holistic clinic in Malad. They've been practicing homeopathy since 15 years now. And they've also co-founded Homeopathic Musing, which is an online platform uh, which help the budding homeopath as well as the senior uh, uh, homeopath in uh, spreading knowledge, homeopathic knowledge, basically. And we have a lot of courses planned on our uh, platform. And uh, we have uh, Dr. Kamlesh Kakre, a well-known homeopath in Nagpur. He started his, uh, his practice in 2008. He also is running his clinic successfully and is also an enthusiastic homeopath wanting to spread knowledge. We have Dr. Kamle, uh, Dr. Charu Vahan, who is also a well-known figure in South India. He has his practice in South India since 2007 and has also his own organization, Homeo Academy, which runs uh, seminars uh, across South India. Uh, we wel I welcome all the four speakers. And before we start today's session, I would like to uh, quickly go through our upcoming classroom to clinic course. So this course is basically aimed at uh, helping the young practitioners and the students who are wanting to start their practice or have already started practice. Uh, this uh, course is for them. This, it is to strengthen their classroom basics and apply them in clinical use. We are starting in March, uh, on the 13th of March. It is going to be a six month course. And uh, it, is it is going to really help you in strengthening your uh, classroom uh, basic. We, we are going to uh, cover organ on, rep uh, how to use different repertories, uh, how to uh, take a case, and a lot more things that will be discussed. We'll have uh, specialized uh, mentoring sessions for those who have any query during the course can ask the queries, can solve questions. We'll be having a personalized mentoring session for them. We'll be given complimentary Synergy software. And uh, a lot, it is basically at an aim on uh, improving our, uh, our classroom knowledge and applying them to clinical use. We have a lot more other courses coming up. That is the animal series, uh, from animal series spiders, that will be covered, cancer management, SOLS, and a lot more. We'll be providing you the link uh, of all these courses, and you can go through them. Also, we have a quiz uh, at the end of the session. I'll be sharing you the link of the quiz in uh, the uh, uh, chat box, and you can uh, have, you have uh, uh, till Monday, you can answer those questions, and do, uh, there will be four questions, and those who are who correctly answer all the four questions will get 50% off on our upcoming uh, classroom to clinic course. We will we'll, uh, provide you the link of the quiz in the chat box at the end of the session. So do uh, stay till the end and uh, be attentive because these questions will be related to the session. And before we move on, I would like to uh, go through the basic hygiene factor. Mute your lines all the time. Try keeping your videos on for an interactive session. Raise your hand whenever you have a question or you can just put it in your chat box, put it in the chat box and I'll address it at the end. Do not scribble on the screen as it's very distracting for the speaker. 
you can make no share your experience and enjoy in case you have any difficulty feel free to contact on the below numbers i'll quickly start with today's session Thank Dr. Preeti will be going uh, for yeah. Us. Yes. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hope you are doing good. Um, thank you, Taskeen, for the lovely introduction. Uh, just a couple of additional points that I wanted to add before I start sharing uh, my case for today. One is that the classroom to clinic course is not necessarily only for young students. Um. Uh, if you're young at heart, you can still join the course. What I mean is that, you know, if you have begun your practice and, uh, you know, maybe you're new to some of the contemporary methods in homeopathy, for example, you, uh, you're not so much aware of the kingdom method, the sensation method, this course is for you. Um, uh, if you. If you are somebody who took a break from practice and, you know, you're planning to return back to practice, this course is for you. Um, the whole idea of developing this course is basically to give you the clinical tools and the confidence to practice uh, world-class homeopathy. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not going to be, you know, same uh, standard cases. We are not going to give you lectures on organ on, but how can you apply that organ on in practice? You know, how, what, how is case taking so unique, so important, and how can you replicate it? You know, how can you really apply it in your own individual clinics? So, uh, this is one of a kind course, and I really encourage all of you all to join. Uh, today, all four of us are going to speak and demonstrate some of the cases. And uh, you will also kind of get an idea of how we are going to conduct this upcoming course. So, this is a little sneak peek for you all uh, in that regard. Uh, so I'm going to share a case uh, of a woman um, who came to us for severe menorrhagia and a lot of dysmenorrhea. Okay. And uh, so let's see. It's a very short case, uh, but very, very interesting. So she came... And uh, she was a young woman, uh, maybe mother of a, uh, you know, seven, eight years old girl. So maybe in her late 30s. Um, and she had a lot of, a lot of bleeding during menses, profuse menstrual bleeding. And her hemoglobin had dropped down to around eight, which is really low. Um, and they had done... Uh, you know, DNC of the, uh, and they were, they had also done the hysteroscopy and uh, sonography, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They found that it's a bulky uterus. Um, the sonography also kind of revealed that you know this could be maybe uh, maybe adenomyosis. You know, maybe the beginning of it, etc. Um, her main complaint was that the bleeding would come like it would gush out as soon as she would try to get up. Like during her menses, especially the first few days, uh, you know, if she gets out of bed or she gets out of the chair, as soon as she does it, there would be a huge gush of blood. So she would have to keep sitting in one place all the time. And uh, when she would be sitting, the bleeding wouldn't be as bad. You know, it wouldn't be so bad at all. Um, but otherwise, as soon as she would get up, the bleeding would be like, you know, she had to rush to the washroom um, because her uh, her sanitary napkins, her pads wouldn't be able to even hold all the profuse bleeding that she had. And there would be a lot of clots along with bloods. And she would also have some menstrual cramps uh, and a lot of dysmenorrhea, uh, especially for the first two days. Her bleeding would continue at least for eight, nine days. That's quite a lot, isn't it? So the bleeding would continue for a long, long time. And um, let me do something. Yeah. Okay. 
and the color of the blood of her bleeding was dark is dark red and uh, of course with a lot of clots so this was her chief complaint so along with the chief complaint if you try to understand the person behind the chief complaint so her nature was she's too emotional very very sentimental and can cry very easily she says i try to make the other person understand but they are not understanding me i feel that they are blaming me and i feel so let down so we ask her what do you mean by let down they are not doing or behaving the way i want them to behave they are not understanding me i feel as a lump as a lump in my throat i'm a very touchy person i'm the first daughter okay i'm like the eldest of all the siblings and obviously i was extremely pampered but over time i didn't remain my father's favorite my father brags about my other sister um her other sister is also of a patient and uh, she is complete opposite of this person uh, this other person her sister she is a go getter she is very ambitious you know she works in some corporate jobs etc uh, on a very senior position and this patient of our uh, this patient is not very ambitious uh, you know she likes to stay at home and things like that so she says i don't see that my father is as as proud of me as my uh, as my other sister and um, i feel bad about it uh, i'm a homemaker i do a lot of hard uh, art um but my sister is a go getter and that hurts me so uh in the first slide we had certain chief complaints some physical characteristics so if i am hoping that you all made a note of it and kind of circle down some of the key words or the key items that are that were peculiar for this patient and here we get some idea some uh, a, a sort of a character sketch you know so we want to find a remedy who is who has these physical peculiarities you know we need a remedy which has profuse bleeding and all the characteristics of of the menstrual symptoms that she had but at the same time a person or remedy who is very emotional gets hurt very easily is very touchy um is very sentimental um is very was very pampered and now feels bad that she is not uh, uh she is not the uh, not her father's favorite yeah so somebody like that is it making sense she says i am a child at heart people who are over the top i feel intimidated by them when i go out to meet the ladies in delhi um i feel very under confident amongst them i'm not a very ambitious person but i'm a very creative person so she gets intimidated with a group of loud women a group of women who are over the top uh she doesn't feel very comfortable yeah and uh, she kept saying creative so we asked what are her, what are your hobbies and she says she does a lot of mosaic and beautiful work so she makes these pieces of mosaic art which requires a lot of patience and it is very detailed each piece takes a lot of time to curate and she makes these pieces and she often uses them to gift her uh, gift her friends or relatives she doesn't do that professionally but a lot of people have reached out to her to kind of uh, create something for them so this is something she does she says i am also very passionate about bird watching and very interestingly both these two hobbies mosaic as well as bird watching they require a lot of patience she says um, uh, during the during the winters in and around delhi there are lots of places where there's a lot of birds that we see there's a lot of migration ha happening so i am all about traveling and you know going to these places and sitting with my binoculars and enjoying the nature and waiting for these birds i'm a kind of a person who will sit in nature and enjoy herself 
I'm a kind of person who would want to know, oh, what kind of tree this is, what kind of bird this is, what kind of leaf it is. Um, I'm also uh, somebody who doesn't stick to one thing. I want to learn different things. I want to go to different places. I want to do many things in life. In fact, my word, her name was Trishna. She says my word, the meaning of the my my name also means that I have I there's a lot of thirst, thirst for more and more. So I want to do everything. I want to enjoy everything. I want to do many many things. Yeah. So this is another piece of information which is which needs to be covered by the remedy. <coughs> <clears throat> then we inquire about her fears and she says I have fear of losing people my relationships are very very important for me she says that I have built my life around my relationships now this is very very important she says my family and my relationships they mean everything to me and while talking to us also, and this was on the Zoom, it was an online consultation. During talking also, she starts getting, you know, she first gets choked up and she gets very overwhelmed and emotional. She actually starts crying. She says, I cherish my relationships and I can't even imagine my life without them. I need emotional strength. I need their emotional support. If I'm going to hear bad news, I get really scared. So that is another fear, you know, of getting some bad news. If I get a call in the middle of the night, I'm, I'm, I get very panicky. I'm very scared. What if it's a bad news? So that's all. This is the history that we have. Um, and uh, I can give you a little, you know, snippet of how she did. She was with us for over a year. And uh, within two months... Uh, you know, that gushing blood that used to come out that stopped completely. Her energy levels got better. Uh, her clots had comparatively reduced. And in six months, she was almost 70 to 80% better. And she gradually improved. If you see her sonography also, October 20 and then December 20. Uh, and in December 2020, 20, uh, her, her sonography also came absolutely normal. So... This is the case. I'm just going to pause here for, moment, for a moment and see if anybody has any ideas of uh, what this remedy can be. Any suggestions, anybody? Any suggestions on the remedy? And even if not remedy, any, uh, any idea where to look for? What are you going to do? How are you going to begin your analysis? You can put it on the chat or you can unmute yourself. Anything. Gushing menses, Dr. Sonali is saying, okay, yeah, this is very, very important. Actually, what Sonali points out is very important because uh, this is something which is very important, so we can't ignore it. Dr. Chinu suggests uh, carcinosin, okay. Uh, Dr. Dr. Kapasi is saying we'll give an acute remedy to stop bleeding and then constitutional. You don't necessarily need to do that because your constitutional remedy, because this is not the first episode, no? it keeps coming. Uh, it's not the first time her menses had been like that. And she didn't come to us while she had acute bleeding. So uh, not necessarily this should be the, the way to go. You can give the constitutional remedy which can cover this cover this piece. Okay. Any any other thoughts? Dr. Chino, why carcinosin? Okay. 
because she's artistic so if you see artistic aptitude you will have so many remedies in the in the in the repertory it's not just carcinosin yeah okay so let me go ahead and share my screen once again so if you see mind artistic aptitude we have 69 remedies and actually the most important remedies are phosphorus and scorpion um and not really carcinosin so uh yeah we need to kind of uh, be very careful on how we how we uh, analyze or you know use this uh, so anyway i i would go with what dr sonali said you know where to begin and how to analyze in this case especially because we have very very peculiar symptoms of the chief complaint we cannot put it aside and start with uh you know oh what is her nature what are her mind symptoms no so you have to pick up the rubrics uh pick up the repertory and start putting in the repertory these key characteristic symptoms so that's what we did so we took female menses profuse gushes in and what she said that as soon as she gets up you know this is there is this gushing blood as soon as she gets up and very interestingly in this case there's only a single remedy this is a single symptom rubric uh, which has cocculus then profuse walking aggravates and then menses painful dyspnoea and as soon as the flow starts it's it's a little better otherwise you know in the first few days when it's not bleeding she has a lot of dyspnoea so you see the remedy cocculus that is coming up which is very very interesting i wouldn't have thought it you know i mean i would also think of lots of bleeding thalapsy and so many other remedies no you would think of lilium tea you would think of thalapsy you would think of hemamelis you'll think of so many other bleeding sort of remedies but i wouldn't have thought of cocculus but cocculus came up very very interestingly in the repertory now would we just straight away give cocculus i wouldn't who is this person what is the central idea or the central theme of this case yeah how do we confirm cocculus we also saw in the case that she's a very sensitive person very emotional she spoke about her touchiness and you know how sensitive she is if somebody uh you know even with her sister with her father etc if people are not understanding her she's very very touchy about that and you know this this lump in the throat this is very very peculiar she said she is very close to her family the family provides her her support the family her relationships her entire life revolves around her relationships but do you see any issues of lacking or losing do you see any mineral theme or do you see any me versus you, you do you see any one man up one upmanship not really what is what is coming up uh, or highlighted in this case is her sensitivity so we can we can be fairly confident that this is a plant kingdom remedy now in the plant kingdom for a lot of you who may who are you know uh, not so much familiar with the sensation method or with the personal evolution method or with the plant chart the plant kingdom can be divided into dicotyledons monocotyledons and ancient plants now 90% of our homeopathic remedies are in the dicotyledon remedies or the dicotyledon plant remedies and this dicotyledon plant remedies are divided into six subclasses uh, it's based on the cronquist method of classification the earliest devil earliest um, uh developed plants to the most evolved plants so is based on the evolution of the plants the plants that came earliest to the most advanced plants so subclass 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so there are six subclasses now if you study these sub six subclasses you can also notice that the 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 remedies or the um, or the families which are on the left side of this chart they are more dependent they are more emotional they are more helpful they are more sympathetic they are more um, feminine in that way so in this case also we can figure out that this is a more feminine 
this is a more left sided remini so we know this is a plant in the repertory we know it's a coculus we can be sure it's a plant kingdom it's also on the left side of the plant king plant chart and if you see on the left side of the plant uh, chart uh the first subclass is magnolids uh, and within the magnolids uh we have coculus which belongs to the order ranunculales here in ranunculales we have the family manispermaceae which is coculus along with other remedies and the main sensation in the ranunculales is as if they don't have any skin all external impressions affect them profoundly and there's lots of mixed emotions and then they can't keep these emotions and they can cry they can weave they can get angry etc etc many spermacy or coculus is somewhat very similar to the remedy pulsatilla which belongs to ranunculales i saw some of you who are senior practitioners and who are more familiar with some of the more advanced concepts in homeopathy for them i can uh, i can also say this and the and, and the young practitioner students you can completely ignore what i'm saying now even put your plugs or just close your ears when i'm saying this that many spermacy is the adolescence developmental age group so her creativity uh you know her bird watching her mosaic etc etc and you know uh, can also be explained with the adolescence theme or the air element in this case okay so you can also explain her creativity through from that perspective which is in the manispermacy if you see in the uh, in the complete repertory sentimental girls out of the two remedies one remedy is coculus fartok says menses early profuse too often gushes out in a stream when rising on feet on tiptoe very weak during menses can scarcely stand this is exactly what she had so she received coculus 1m two doses and it was repeated once in 15 days and uh, gradually this once in 15 days was reduced to once a month and that's all she received she did not receive any other acute remedies uh, she did not need any other anything else no intercurrent nothing just on coculus 1m she did extremely well and that's all i had to uh, i had to share unless there are any questions for me looks like no question so either the case was very simple or some you know it's the post lunch time so maybe it's in the uh people are a little drowsy nevertheless let's go on to the next case and if there are any questions we can take it up in the end okay over to you taskin yes so we have the next speaker coming up is dr rajaksha vaidya ma'am i'll hand over to you you can share your screen yes okay good afternoon everyone um, i think after preeti's case uh, i think it was very nice case uh, let's go ahead and uh, see another case so prajukta is actually my best friend so she would generally say very nice case to whatever <laughs> i whatever i present so you should not you should take whatever she says about me with a pinch of salt <laughs> no it was very nice and how we reach uh, to a remedy how is what is the entry point no that was something very interesting so different cases will have a uh, different entry points so how to catch that so this case i think teaches that okay so let's go ahead and uh, see another case this is a case of a menopausal syndrome and a uterine fibroid 
in menopausal syndrome this 48 years female okay she had come to us i think uh, just after the covid time uh, been one and one one or 1.5 years now almost two years okay so when she came to us um, the main complaint were the irregularity of the menses and since many uh, months that she didn't have uh, the uh, periods and but she had lot of those symptoms around it uh, where you know bloating and she used to have the pain and she was not very comfortable with it and uh, in the initial time when because of the fibroid when the periods used to come they were very very painful so all these imbalances which were piling up for her along with this she had major complaints of uh, the depression around this time and multiple joint pains as we know menopausal syndrome can be a combination of all these you know things together mind and body because how the uh, the the period is you know how the period is there where there is a estrogen going down and how the body and mind adapts to it right so very important phase in uh, females life so the main other complaints in terms of her depression was she used to feel very lazy in the morning after waking up she was very drowsy after eating like immediately she is she is taken her meal and then she would want to you know sleep and this sleep was also not uh, very refreshing it was not refreshing and very heavy as if uh, you know as if she is there is no control and she just want to sleep her eyes used to get closed even if she doesn't want to sleep and desire to lie down and do nothing uh, she had two children and she had to do lot of things for them but um, she was not able to do that and so for the menses it was 6 months back that she had uh, got the menses several medicines she had taken and nothing was really helping her and when the period used to come it was painful and very heavy flow then she had these joint complaints so she said while describing it she said all my movements are frozen in this extreme cold weather so in the past i think two years back in mumbai there was a lot of cold uh, in january month so this kind of a change in the temperature she was not able to take and she said i am unable to move out of the house see the kind of language that she is using all my movements are frozen okay so frozen is something very important word over here and i am unable to move out of the house and that is very frustrating for her i was covering myself with clothes and socks and everything but you know i was not feeling like moving out of the house and i'm she is not that kind of person she is the one who wants to go out move out you know do a lot of activity she was the one who was running all around so she was not feeling good about it and then uh, there was this major spine surgery that has happened for her uh due to nerve compression and the prolapse of the vertebral disc and uh, on that side it has got aggravated so there was numbness on the right side she used to say as if formication munge aalya sarkha hote hai so these were her complaints then we asked about her some you know details of the physical complaint that she had so she said there is extreme chilliness of the hands and feet and there is icy cold kind of feeling that i very interesting no? who would say it's not just cold is it's kind of icy cold what kind of pain it's an electric like pain okay which gets aggravated in the morning and long standing if i do then this pain aggravates and there is lot of heaviness and stiffness of the joints that i feel and then she was she started how uh, you know with all these complaints have started and all these things in terms of her depression also piled up she said since covid because all uh, you know her family members everybody as was at home she said i used to feel as if i am tired okay so this gives an hint to us you know somebody is using this kind of a language as if i am tired 
बांधल्यासारखं शी सेड वाय इट वॉज हॅपनिंग बिकॉज शी सेड आय एम डुईंग एव्हरीथिंग फॉर एव्हरी वन बट नो बडी हॅड टाइम फॉर मी अँड आय वॉज वर्किंग सो मच देर वॉज नो मेड नथिंग अँड आय हॅड टू डू एव्हरीथिंग अँड आय वॉज फिलिंग दॅट आय एम नॉट फ्री एव्हरी वन हॅज ऑक्युपाईड इन इच रू माय this uh, this daughter is there my son is there my husband is working from home but then i am i was the one only working and i was you know just working and i feel as if i am tied so this is a kind of a uh, a, a deeper kind of a expression it's not just the emotion that she was angry or sad or you know very emotional but she she used something as if i am tied this is a word of an sensation okay so we have to see what is coming up whenever they are describing uh, their chief complaint this came at chief complaint what are the thing which are important what are the words that are you know used by patient i don't feel free okay then we ask her okay, okay what is the experience she said i i i i feel as if i'm tied so if this is a kind of a feeling that she has then what is the experience because if we go deeper the experience will be completely individual right the other pers- two different pers- uh, different people saying this same language can have a different kind of experience so we ask her what is your ex- experience she says it's very frustrating i am in so much of pain and everything is piling up on me and then she started saying that you know my husband lost his job in 2020 and he suffered a big loss around 2 cr in 2027 and then uh, he had still a job so we were somehow managing my daughter is also very stubborn she say you know throws all the tantrums my husband has no concern with it so it is very difficult for me to you know adjust with these young generation kids they don't uh, realize that i am suffering she never comes to help me so all these things are you know uh, uh, piling it up on her and then what is her experience again it came up i am feeling too tied up in this situation again it came up at this level so something which is very important coming again and again we have to note that and then see what comes for the So she said you cannot do anything if you are tied up mala ekdam bandhlya sarka vatto now we ask this question that visualize this tied no what comes up because she two to two to three times she said about this bandhlya sarka tied up right so we ask her to visualize what is tied ex uh, ex you know come make your uh, you know visualization of this kind of a situation and then tell us what is your experience why this is important because then it comes into your consciousness she is actually you know imagining and then she is talking about her own experience so this was a very important step to take her deeper okay to understand the deeper level of her sensation i asked her. she said i am tied up something tied up in something which i am unable to come out so she gave this kind of image that i'm sitting on the chair i'm tied up with the rope and i am unable to get out of it so this is at a very very deeper level that this imagination came and this experience also will come and we quite a few time do this in our practice and no one patient will tell you the same imagination because this imagination kind of is no signifies the delusion is very very individual okay and then we ask then what is your experience to be in this that you are in the chair tied up with the rope what is your experience i am feeling suffocated i am unable to come out of this i am feeling obstructed so this suffocated this obstructed are very important word at the sensation level okay and then she was into this uh experience we ask her what will be the exact opposite of feeling because in one kind of a polarity where she is feeling this obstructed suffocated and tied up there has to be some opposite feeling to it so we asked her what what is your experience opposite of this feeling she said it's completely free 
relax i want to just break this ties and want to escape to come out of it okay and it was of course a deeper level of case taking but what i want to make a point here is a very very important thing so it can come up in your case taking also sometimes it come up and we don't know what to do with it so we generally ignore or uh, in the early time when we start we start practicing so, so certain thing which we don't know but if we we just have to take note of everything what is coming up while the case taking so this was one thing which we explored and kept it and then she said uh, you know since 2017 that there was a downfall in her health she was not doing uh, very well financially then um, the husband had uh, some partnership with with the friend and that friend cheated her and then that friend had you know uh, lodged a complaint against her so it was all very very chaotic kind of a situation and she said i was feeling stuck in this situation where there is no way of coming out so you see in another aspect on another sphere also she is saying the same thing i am stuck in the situation there is no way going out of here but she says i am not i am not the one who will just keep sit you know i will not just sit and cry i used to get angry and uh, you know irritable but i wanted to do something i kept doing things so this gives an idea of that kind of personality what's her nature we ask another question this is also a very nice question if we ask we get a what priti was saying who is that person what is the personality of that patient so i have always been little obese but very active i like exercising dancing i am an introvert person i don't open up easily and i have a very caring nature i give chances to people you know and i i forgive them all. and then in one situation she told about mother in law uh, and the family that it was a their love marriage and uh, the in laws were against both the families were against it and once but they got married but the in laws were not treating her well as usual the same most of us face this situation but then they used to you know fight or taunt me so we asked her, okay this is a situation what is your experience again to see what is coming up she said again she said gusmatle sarkh vaat i used to feel suffocated so then we asked what is the can you explain about this word suffocation she said as if someone has tied me up and then you can't breathe and then again when you take deeper and try to understand this little deeper the opposite feeling that comes up is i want to just feel free release it break it okay and what else i can think of at the at this level and she laughs you know so at a very irrational kind of a language uh, which is at a very deeper level sometimes patient might not be aware of it but this is something at a deeper level which came and which in the initial case, initial uh, stages also we saw so this becomes a very very important aspect of her case then we asked her about the fears she said i have fear of something collapsing like during earthquakes then what will happen that you are unable to breathe no one can hear you so if you take uh, you know the fear of an individual at a deeper level you know, what is this fear about then you get more individualization of that particular patient so you are unable to breathe again that came up hmm? as if you know the building or something will fall then people will get scared because to go down there why because there will be more of suffocation and then there is a fear of water because i cannot go in the swimming pool and very very interesting dreams she has because all these things fears dreams they give an individualistic manifestation right so she had this dream that i am stuck under a slab and i am unable to breathe i'm stuck down there there is no one around me and no one can hear me what is the experience in the dream she said there is as if you know its oxygen is less and i am unable to breathe it over there then another very interesting thing what she shared uh, about her life uh, situation that 
there was a time before this depression actually uh, was manifested before that also she had these kinds of uh, a depressive kind of symptoms uh, some years before that so she said that they were staying in this rented flat and um, uh, in that flat okay uh, she uh, used to get these kind of a kind of a clairvoyant intuitions that you know whenever there somebody is going to pass away she used to come to know that one week or 10 days prior she will come to know that and she used to feel kind of weird feeling uh, when this is going to happen and exactly after a week or a 10 days she used to get this news or a call or something like that about this events which are which were more of a negative way also that there was a period when she used to feel that i used to wake up and i used to have a very bad uh, kind of odor about like a toilet kind of odor everywhere but there was nothing as such like there was nothing like toilets were clean everything around the area was clean but that i used to sense then um, i used to constantly feel that you know i will go crazy i will go mad and i used to pray a lot at that time was kind of a overwhelming uh, feeling that she had then during that also she used to feel very drowsy that you know i just like to sleep how this kind of heavy sleep that she has right now and she used to constantly feel that either i'm going mad or there is something wrong with me or there is something wrong in this house and almost and most of the time she used to feel very drowsy and you know uh sleepy and doing nothing one incident she said that she had gone to this ajmer sharif and there was this shrine i think which which is which was there inside and then she was like praying for it and bowing down and when she was doing that she felt that somebody is you know pressing me at that time and it was in a reality that kind of experience as if she was living this experience uh in consciousness right so she somebody was pressing me down and i was not able to get up i couldn't see anyone doing that but i was feeling it and i was feeling it that some some supernatural power is doing this and i was very scared and what was her experience at time i was feeling breathless so again this breathlessness suffocation was also there in the dream and these situations then in the my relative she used to say in childhood also i used to uh, you know feel that as if i am possessed by spirit or a ghost i used to feel depressed at that time i didn't want to have any interest in anything and lot of uh, in childhood i used to have lot of abdominal pain as a complaint and it never got diagnosed so all in all this was the history she had more dreams that there is blood everywhere all the body parts are cut there are dirty toilets with the stools she used to also get dreams of snakes and a sexual amorous kind of a dream that she is walking naked people are seeing her she's not wearing anything so those kinds of dream that she is to see yeah so more or less this was a kind of a history that we had and i think with with this history okay um we had given her the remedy and she did really 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 very well in terms of her uh, complaints all the complaint within 3 months she was 50% better she got her menses there was a flow which was you know which was not there for a long time and um, the body pain during the menses complaints also reduce her mood become much better down the line 6 months she felt more better almost 70% energy levels become good period started coming regularly the mood was good that imbalance what she used to feel it was not there she had completely forgotten you know about this and when it, i so asked her she so i i had this complaint this kind of a um, result that she had and she did really well in terms of her joint complaint her sleep her mood her periods 
and she continues to do better in almost for still still uh, she comes on and off whenever required but for those one and a half two years she did really really very well yeah so i think this was the whole case anybody has any recommendations let's see anything that comes up you can put it on the chat or anything what is important maybe not remedy but what was important yeah tide and free sensation plant kingdom very good tide feeling yes that was very very important which came right samina and sonali are saying this very good anything else suffocation and lack of being able to breathe yes so all these things we have to find out where are these things are present yes chilly icy coldness anacardesi family okay fifth super class plant kingdom very good so we have to summarize all these things and see what comes up to 4 bsc family yeah so let's see how does it go okay very good so what did we see we see you know what was coming up tight bound stuck breaking free which was coming repeatedly and it was coming in the physical complaints also all the joints are frozen i am not feeling free covid also you know when people were at home she felt that current situation also she is feeling the same thing too tight and sitting up this image that comes up and what is the deeper experience of suffocated feeling obstructed and what was the opposite feeling of the free wants to break free escape relax hmm? there is no way coming out she wants to come out so being in there was very very suffocating for her. then in past situation in mother in law also she felt the same thing tied suffocated break free yeah fears also she felt suffocated dreams also she felt so this is coming again and again and again so it becomes the global the central the deepest part okay this is the individualization individualizing for this patient right so we have to find this we have to uh, you know focus this on this our prescription okay so this is how we can understand this it can we see inside aggravate suffocation break free brown dancing exercising activity all this comes under as per dr shankaran's understanding of super classes he has uh, worked on the super classes and the division of the plant all the remedies of plant mineral animal and nozodes and drugs all of it in the different classes in this super classes fifth super class belong to this kind of a themes or the expression where the inside is very you know suffocating they want to break free come out and all these other things like dancing exercising they help so it's a super class five themes here okay as priti was saying about the dicotyledon chart and the divisions of it and the six sub classes this comes under fifth sub class okay we'll understand this little bit better from the sensation of the remedies that we saw okay that was sensation of tight bound unbound active reaction was what desire to go out break that is u4 bac family right somebody has rightly said and this u4 bac belongs to this subclass fifth rosic okay if we can i'll i'll show that in the chart form over there okay and developmentally as per dr gandhi's understanding of pm method 
what kind of a uh, development of that individual what is the inner age what we saw she was taking initiative you know taking uh, the responsibility and doing thing but at the same time she also had this feeling of indifference and stuff right so with all these things and information we have to find out a remedy from say you for bsc family but this this remedy should have all these things even if it is a u4 bsc family so that we reach to a right remedy okay what all things it should cover it should cover this clairvoyance which was very interesting and very individual right i have not heard many i think she was the first one who said all these things right about this being possessed fear of evil spirits fear of insanity and clairvoyance so we have to find out a remedy from you for bsc family covering all these things okay then how do we go ahead from this how do we find out this is one aspect of understanding right so we come down to the remedies of you for bsc family so there are this with the myasms proton take mancinella u pura uh, acaila findica cascarella and stingilia sylvatica these are the remedies from the u for bsc family now we have to see what exactly is a remedy for our patient so we took some rubric which are important and see if that matches because we know the sensation we know the experience we know the super class now we do know the family but to come to a remedy now we take the help of the rubrics so we take these rubrics of losing the insan fear of losing his reason going mad delusion imagination that he's possessed dreams of suffocation dreams of snakes amorous dreams and then extremities complain that she had you know that chilly coldness icy and icy coldness of the feet yeah so that was the uh, the remedy uh, rubrics that i and the one remedy which was covering all these rubrics from the u4 bsc family was mancinella okay so that is how you see um subclass 5 here and early childhood this is a dicotyledon chart u4 bls are over here so at this at this stage when we have understood this from all the aspect this is from plant kingdom angiosperms dicotyledon rosids okay from their u4 bls is the order u4 bac is the family from the order and mancinella is the remedy okay and that is how we become very very sure of our prescription if we do this from all the aspects okay some notes for mancinella so this is a kind of a climbing shrub okay and uh, they have this feeling of being possessed a lot want they want someone to help them out they have a lot of these extreme fears kind of a, a feeling of helplessness crazy kind of a feeling yeah kind of very psycho psychotic kind of a remedy where schizophrenia and all these mental symptoms can come hmm fear of evil dark religious psychosis violent stomach pains and colic diarrhea our patient also had no? mainly uh, sphere of action is mind mucus membrane fear of insanity fear of evil they are also aware afraid of hell and of everything that makes them think of devils fix ideas of cutting or hurting themselves self torture obsessive thought bashful sudden vanishing of thoughts sexual erethism so and sexual dreams also that we saw in the patient lot of fears compulsive thought tormented by delusions and fears and very good remedy for symptoms at puberty or menopause burning pains aversion to tight collars 
biting vesicles on soles of feet urogenital organs is also a uh, sphere of action and clinically very good remedy for ocd is anxiety schizophrenia and paranoia and then i saw some uh, you know something related to the case and a lot of these rubrics match and details who manjilo vori has written about these anxieties and uh, company desires and female complaints so that is how the we match with the chief complaints also so menses which are irregular too late painful profuse as well as scanty yeah i think with this she was, she did very well with mancinella and um, much good results and i think it was the sensations and you know understanding of that and understanding of all the aspect had helped okay any questions but you all were very good good answers i got happy if we don't have any questions we can move for further yeah i don't see any questions right maybe at the end of it if you all have we can make the talk at that time yes we can have questions at the end um... Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the case. Uh, the next speaker that would be coming up uh, would be Dr. Kamlesh. Yes. yes. Thank you, Dr. Daskin, and good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. okay so first of all happy women's day to everyone and let me memorize on this occasion some of the fantastic women in homeopathy like uh, margaret tyler margaret bailey blackie catherine calter elizabeth wright these all were very successful physicians of homeopathy and they all were also teachers writer and they were they did mind blowing work in homeopathy and also um dr priti and project and all the women who have joined today's webinar so to everyone happy women's day let me summarize what we are going to talk about in this webinar some basic concepts of homeopathy like we treat man in disease and not the disease in man and for that we need to understand what the man is and not the disease just the superficial disease but what the man is and to understand what the man is we need to understand these two concept concept of holism and individualization so holism is considering mind body and spirit everything together is holism and when all of these get disturbed in a state of disease this disturbance is always in a peculiar way and this peculiar way is called as individualization so these two basic concepts are very important to prescribe and also to understand this sick as a whole and as an individual this sick as dr kent has explained we need to understand p n e i axis and p n e i stands for p stands for psycho neuro endocrino immunological axis so when there are disturbances on psychological part of individual then it in turns disturbs neurology which disturbs endocrinology and it disturbs immunity and this axis form 
any type of disease to that particular individual. And as we are talking about a women complaint, so in my understanding, role of homeopathy in women, women complaint is not just about talking about female genital complaint or diseases, but women, it is about complaints of women in general. Like for example, here in India, women has to play different type of roles, especially if she is living in a joint family. She need to think about her family, her relationships, her elders, in-laws and her youngers. She has to think about work. She has to think about society. She has to think about culture. She had, after all, she has to think about herself own. So she has various roles to perform at the same time. And that's why she has a lot of stress many times. And this stress causes her some complaints, some diseases. And we need to understand women complaints in this regard also. So let us try to demonstrate this with a case. This is very simple case. We will try to understand stepwise each and every symptom of case. And this is going to be very interesting experience, I believe. So this is the case of 63 years female patient. And she visited us for uncontrolled diabetes and her anxiety disorder on 20th April 2023. And she is very nice lady. And when we asked her about her disease, she told that, Doctor, I have this fear of my disease, this diabetes. And due to this fear, my sugar level is increasing. I follow all the dietary restrictions. I do yoga, pranayam, exercise. I do everything. But I get fear of this diabetes and that's why my sugar level comes up. And when I see those reports, then again, I started to have this fear. And I'm trapped in this cycle. Fear, sugar level, fear, sugar level. So what is important here is not the diabetes, but her fear. Because if diabetes is related to her lifestyle, then correction of li uh, lifestyle may have controlled her diabetes. But it is her fear which is not letting her sugar levels to get normalized. So we asked her about her fears because problem here is not the diabetes but the fear. So we need to understand each and every expression of patient like this. So we asked her, tell me more about this fear. She responded, I have fear of this disease, means any disease. Even if I get fever, I am frightened. And also, I have fear of visiting the doctors. So here, we can understand that we are getting some rubrics, that she is having fear of disease, she, is, she has fear of meeting doctors, and we can just go to repertory and directly find these rubrics. When I imagine those big hospitals, then my BP starts increasing. Even before going there, when I just imagine, when I just think about this big hospital, then my BP blood pressure level started increasing. And going to a family doctor, that doesn't bother me. Because they both are homeopaths. You know, they are not allopaths. There is no big hospital injections and lot of investigations. But they are simple homeopaths talking nicely. So are you getting flavor of her nature? What kind of person she is? But every time when I have to check my sugar level, then I am frightened. Basically, I am not willing to visit these big hospitals. I tell my husband that I don't have diabetes. But he says 
then why your reports are showing high sugar level? What, what you can understand here? That she, she is not ready to accept that she has diabetes. How to understand this? This is childishness in a sense that she is not ready to accept even if she is having diabetes. But she is not ready to accept and she is asking her husband that I don't have diabetes. So in a way, she is clinging, she is childish. So this is how we need to understand each and every expression of patient. Reports are showing that I've, I have diabetes, but my heart is not willing to accept that. Why do I have, I have diabetes, this disease? I have balanced routine. I follow dietary restrictions. I do regular pranayama, yoga and exercises. Still, my sugar levels are not within normal range. So she, she is doing everything, whatever she can do. But yet her sugar level is not under control. So now this is task for her to bring this sugar level under control. And this task is in a sense unachievable for her because she is trying everything. She is doing everything. I hope you are getting this flavor. I want to say my doctor one day that see doctor, my sugar levels are normal without medicine. I want to prove this to doctors. So she want to prove this. She is trying hard for that, but it is not achievable. So it is unachievable task for her. Are you getting this? Then her husband added that since last two months, she has disciplined her routine and diet very strictly. Yet sugar levels are not within range and her HbA1c is 12 now. It should be 5.5 to 6, but it is now 12. So it is quite high. Patients added, I don't want to see the reports. I gather all my courage to do blood investigation. So she need a lot of courage to do that blood investigation because she knew that after doing this investigation, her report will be high every time. But before results, oh my God, lot of strange movements are there inside, inside my body. There is constant palpitation. And I pray God continuously, bring my sugar level within normal range. Hey God, bring my sugar level within normal range and I will give you a lot of sweats. So, this stress before results causing her palpitation, physical symptoms. And then she is praying to God that please, this is like childish clinging, you know. She is praying to God that please bring my sugar level now normal or and I will give you a lot of sweets. I also tell my doctor that doctor will you, I will give you full bag of sugar when my diabetes will be cured. But the sugar level is keep on increasing. What we can understand when is childishness and also sweets. There is a lot of sweets. She is repeatedly talking about sweets. So she must have craving for sweets. Basically, I like sweets. So she confirmed that, she, that she likes sweets. So when diabetes in, is in control, I try some modak. Modak is basically sweets, which Lord Ganesha likes most. But now I have completely stopped taking sweets. And she has now not taking sweets at all. I am relaxed for the whole month. But when doctors advises to check sugar in next follow, then this fear starts. So she is okay unless and until uh, she is taking medicine and everything. But when doctor advised to do this investigation next month, then this whole month she started this anxiety and fear. It's like we are going to exam without preparation. 
that's why she is doing so much preparation you know so doing blood investigation is like exam for her and it is without preparation that's why she tried to do all the preparation and preparation here are exercise diet restrictions yoga pranayam and everything she can do so i follow strict dietary restrictions the whole month i do yoga and exercises very prompt even after doing all these my sugar level is always high what should i do what should i eat what should i not eat these thoughts make me restless earlier i used to be very active happy enthusiastic and always doing something people used to say that i should stop and take rest but now i feel lazy and not doing anything so what she is talking about here earlier i was like this and now i am like this earlier earlier i could do all these things and now i cannot do these things so she is talking about her ability to do things is losing so she is talking about her abilities i am doing everything out of compulsion of routine so it is my compulsion to do all these things as a routine when energy level is normal then i feel good i want any doctor who will say that don't worry your disease will be cured so she want that someone will assure her that don't worry i am here and your disease will be cured so this is again a childish clinging behavior someone who will assure me so she wants this assurance yesterday i come to know about you and i feel so good so we asked her what is your concern regarding your uncontrolled diabetes she had it at first i was not ready to accept that i have this disease now i started to accept it but whenever my sugar levels are uncontrolled i do yoga pranayam exercise diet restrictions and all type of efforts i have this disease and only god knows when it will be cured so can you understand that it is a task beyond her limit and she is striving hard to make her sugar level under control and i feel pressure and constant fear because of this i feel unsafe at that time i ask my husband to sit near me and even if if he has some important work so when i am frightened and feeling unsafe i asked my husband to sit near me and i hold his hand and then it will be okay so what is unrelated word here feeling pressure constant fear is okay but she is feeling unsafe it is out of context unsafe so we asked her about unsafe describe unsafe what is unsafe for you so she added that as if there are thieves and robbers around and you don't feel unsafe so what is unsafe for her like thieves and robbers are around her if you can can go to repertory and you can find rubric for this we have one rubric for this exact rubric and what is the experience there when thieves and robbers are around you what is the experience then palpitation dry throat disinterested don't feel like to see anything moving about here and there can't sleep even sleepy loss of appetite don't want to be in company of people want to be alone she wants someone near her like her husband but she don't want lot of people she want to be alone at that time and she is feeling palpitation so palpitation is coming again and again when she is anxious when she has this fear then she has palpitation 
she has dry throat and she is disinterested so do you have any other phys physical problems so i have this leg pain after injury and it is relieved till physiotherapy till i do some exercise and physiotherapy till then it is okay otherwise i still have this leg pain and I also has piles for that. I took homeopathy treatment to cure it from roots. So she wants that her problem should be eradicated completely. Her diabetes should be eradicated completely. Pile should be eradicated completely from roots. I also had postmenopausal bleeding for around two years. So tell me about your fears. We ask her. She replied, I have fear of death. That's why I asked my husband to stay with me when I am sick. So why she asked her husband to stay with her? Because she has fear of death. She, can, she will die. And if husband will be there, so that he will take me to hospital immediately. So in a way, she want instant, immediate uh, treatment for her disease otherwise she will die so is this indication of some remedy is this symptom or keynote feature of some remedy that when sick they want immediate attention from doctors this fear causes palpitation so again palpitation is there and no amusement in anything not feeling good in doing anything. Then I go to my family physician and after talking to him for some time and getting my blood pressure checked, then I feel good. So just by talking to her family physician, known person, she feel good. So what is this? Can you find some rubric for this or some symptom for this? I ask him, Doctor, will I be alive today or not? He says, don't worry, you are completely okay. Then I feel better. So in a way, she feels that she is going to die today. And she needs immediate attention by doctor. Immediate help, medicinal help. I also have fear of looking down from high places. So these are rubrics, these are symptoms from the poetry. You can search. Fear of water, if any big wave is coming. I have fear of snakes and tigers. What are your hobbies? So I like cleaning house. Cleaning house is a hobby. Rarely someone can say this, that cleaning house is their hobby. So we... We will try to understand this. What is cleaning house mean to her? I do coloring and decorating pots all the time. I like cleanliness since childhood. If my mother was not at home, she went out of town, then I used to swipe and clean whole house before she came back so that she would appreciate me. So what is cleaning for her? getting appreciation. That's why she liked cleaning. And otherwise also, she said, she told me that her house is so clean and neat and clean that one day you visit our house and you see by your own. So this is the case. If you have some suggestions for this patient, Let so we me, have few suggestions yeah, in the yeah. chat. Let, just let me uh, tell follow up. Within a month, her confidence increased, her fear decreased, and she feels active and talk to people. Her interest in surrounding is increased. And emotionally, she was very, very much improved within a month. After two months, fear was almost absent. Confidence increased, palpitation decreased, enthusiasm of work increased. And now recent follow-up, 
her diabetes was much much under control for the first time yes so your suggestions please Dr. Chino suggests Econite as the remedy. Doc Rakshita has uh, Arsenic as the remedy as suggestion. Any other suggestion? Calcarea asks someone's writing. Calcarea group. Econite. So we have these few suggestions. Very good. These are some nicest suggestions. And one of you has reached the medicine. Very good. So how to understand the case that we can clearly observe that it is a theme of lacking and losing the capacity. But at the same time, we can observe that there are two issues. One is of lacking, like a child clinging and fearful and on the other hand fear of losing him and taking charge doing everything lot of efforts and control she want to control over this situation so when we have these two situation in mineral case then it is solved generally so we need to see what these two elements are so we put rubrics Mind, fear, strangers of fear, death of impending de death, sweet desire, delusion, thieves around, delusion, robbers, anxiety, health about, fear, death of fear, disease of fastidious, and anticipation elements from insecurity, clinging, carried desire to be, and it clearly indicates towards arsenic. And there are a lot of symptoms of arsenic too. But on the other hand, Fear of pins, pointed pain, fear of strangers, fear, sweet desires, fear disease of death of, fear of oppression, anticipation, dentist, physician before going to, magnetized desire to be and clinging. This indicates calcarea. Also, there is arsenic, but it is clearly indicating cal uh, calcarea. And also, we have some rubric of calcarea or ars too, which is joining together calcarea and ars. Like company desire for palpitation from least emotion, anxiety future about, anxiety health about, heart palpitation emotion from slight, sensitive, oversensitive, disturbed, and sweet desire. So this is giving calcarea. Arsenic is good, calcarea is good, but in this patient, we have indications of both calcarea as. So we need to find something. We should not neglect any one part, not the calcarea, not the arsenic, but chapter of both are there. So let me try and go to the Matra Medica. What Fatuk says, this calcarea as is a remedy was found useful clinically in complaints of fat women around climactric when slightest emotion causes palpitation. This is very important symptom for me in this case. With, this is very important symptom. And also, um, Yes. yes, probably now you can see. Yes. So, in FATAG, we can see this important symptom. That, that this remedy was found useful clinically in complaints of fat women around climactric when slightest emotion causes palpitation. So, this is very important symptom for me from Matra Medica. Also, when we see refer soul of remedies, then there are a lot of indications of calcarea hours in this patient. This is chilly patient, palpitation from least emotion, breathlessness on ascending. Calcarea hours is a mineral remedy. 
of the cancer myism because this is an achievable uh, task for her to control her diabetes and she is doing lot of efforts superhuman efforts to control doctor say doctor one day my sugar level will be under control without medicine so this is out of proportion uh, a big task for her and she is doing lot of efforts superhuman efforts so this is how we can understand cancer myism in this case i need people but i cannot trust them they may rob me the patient cannot trust anyone calcium is there as a need for security and support like she wants from her husband so we see in calcarea arsenicosa a person who feels insecure as well as mistrustful so you can read this you can read whole this calcarea as from soul of remedies so we prescribed her calcarea as 200 vd for 2 days and uh, result i have shown you so this is all from my side if you have any questions then you can ask right now or at the end of this session over to you dr taske yes sir thank you so much for such an interesting case uh, we'll take the questions at the end whoever has it can write it on the chat box uh, the next and the very last speaker of ours is dr charu vahan uh, sir you can go ahead with your just a reminder please uh, do not unmute yourself when the speaker is speaking it's very distracting for others sorry dr charu you are mute i think yeah good evening everyone am i audible now yes sir yeah so today's topic is about the role of homeopathy in women's complaint in my understanding homeopathy has an unlimited scope in treating the complaints of women so when compared to man women has a different set of life there are four major stages in a woman's life that is one is puberty the second thing is the marriage and conception and the third thing is the pregnancy and lactation and the fourth stage is the menopause so in each and every stage or in each and every change of their life they have an impact in the particular individual as a whole so as a whole the entire female mind and body has to adapt to that change if that adaptation is not happening healthy then it becomes a potential to convert into a disease state so in this scenario homeopathy has an effective solution a very good solution in treating a female complaint so the first thing which i want to discuss a case is about a case of an infantile uterus with hypo hypoplastic changes which means that the uterus has not attained the growth according to its age which may be resulting the person to be not getting puberty or sometimes they get puberty but they cannot get conceived they cannot get pregnant so this was a case of a 14 years of aged girl who has a very immature and childish behavior at one point 
and she is very much irritable anger and egoistic at an another level his her immature behaviors and childish behaviors shy timidity whatever those kind of immature behaviors will be shown in front of unknown unfamiliar persons or to a new persons but with her mother she will be very talkative and very obstinate in whatever she want to do and she will be uh, very irritable and anger with her mother and he will be very egoistic so i am trying to present the case in a very simple manner Uh, this was a case which had been um treated several years before so this is the presentation of the case the child is not socializing with others she used to always be very content with herself so this was the presentation of the case so with this limited symptomatology can we arrive at a remedy any idea so the doctors had told the parents that she cannot be uh, getting her menarche so this was the stage and the child was brought to homeopathic treatment the only symptom which was very prominent in the child is she is very obstinate anger egoistic in the home but when it comes outside the home she will be very timid immature and bashful any ideas are welcome no ideas any suggestions for the remedy yes sir we have yeah one suggestion Silesia, Lyco. Okay. Doctor Chino had written Pulsa Chilla. Mm hmm. Someone is writing Calcarea. Yeah. Good, good suggestions. So she again is writing Lyco. Okay. so how to analyze this case i just analyze this case in this aspect one is the child has a developmental issue with its reproductive organ and there were two prominent behaviors in the case which is a childish behavior immature and non socializing and the other one is egoistic obstinate and anger so the remedy what we have to prescribe to this girl is should cover all these aspects so whether lycopodium covers all these aspect or whether pulsatilla covers all these aspects so these were the rubrics which were taken in the case mind anger temper tantrums mind sensorious critical mind egoism self esteem and mind shame ailments from aggravation and mind awkwardness others in the presence of 
So Beretta self was the remedy given to the girl. So when you can see that the timid, bashful, childish, immature of Beretta and obstinate, egoistic, self-centered, anger of sulfur and on one side. So with this combination, Beretta sulfuricum was given in 200 potency in water dose to the girl and it was continued for three months and after three months her first menstruation started. We sent her for the investigation and the uterus has been developed and all its hypoplastic changes have been um, changed and it was it has become grown into a normal uterus. And after that, she had regular periods and recently, four months before, she came with her kit for the treatment. This is one case where I have learned that homeopathy has an unlimited scope in treating any kinds of disease, especially in case of female disorders. And the second case, what I wanted to discuss is this is a case of an intrauterine death of a fetus in the seventh month. Actually, the woman was at the beginning of her third trimester. She suddenly started developing an urinary tract infection with high fever. And since she was pregnant, she has been admitted into the hospital and they were giving some treatment for her. Then the fever started reducing and the next day they have been noticed that the fetal movement has been stopped. When they went for a scan and they found out that the fetal has been dead. So now what happened is again the patient started fever and it was almost a septic condition for her. So this is the state of the patient now. The allopaths couldn't do any kind of intervention because of this high infectious fever. So any idea how to treat this condition? Any suggestions? I couldn't see the uh, chat box. If anybody is typing, please task in, let me know. Yes, sir. Someone is writing pyrogen. Pyrogen, yes. Any other suggestions? Sikel core. Okay. Why Sikel? Yeah. Why Sikel core? Any idea? Okay. We have one more suggestion. Cephalinum. Cephalinum. Okay. So how I worked out this case? So the first thing is it is an acute condition which is critical and the patient is in a septic state. We have got only one clear symptom presentation that was 
urinary tract infection okay so the patient have severe burning difficulty in passing urine and all kinds of urinary tract infection symptoms were very prominent in the case with fever and now the presenting complaint is the fetus has been dead and it is inside the mother's womb it has to be removed so in nerve repository that is a rubric nerve pregnancy expels dead fetus and the second rubric is pregnancy urination difficult with these two rubrics i arrived at the remedy cantharis cantharis 30 in water dose was given to the patient with frequent repetition and slowly after giving cantharis the fever started reduced first the fever settled down then the fetus was expelled without any surgical intervention it happened in the hospital uh, the medicine was given to the patient without the knowledge of those allopathic doctors because they were all helpless and they can't do anything about the condition but after giving this cantharis everything happened spontaneously so if you could see the allen's keynotes can you see the repertory no sir Okay. Can you see the report now? Yes. Yeah. So if if you open the uh, Sabina drug in Allen's keynotes. The last line, we can see this promotes expulsion of molds and foreign bodies from uterus. In bracket, you can see this cantharis. As we all know, cantharis is one of the most important drug in urinary tract infection with severe burning and urging, septic conditions of urine, everything. Cancer is, is one of the important drug, but I, I was searching for whether it has this kind of quality to eliminate the dead fetus from the mother's womb because that was the necessary thing which is maintaining as a septic state for the mother. So after giving cancer is everything was solved. and the patient was better. So this is one critical condition where homeopathy could help even in such a critical state. And I wanted to share you an, another case similar to the same kind of state where it was in the eighth month of pregnancy the pregnant woman was normal. There was no issues for her. But suddenly she noticed that the movement of the fetus has been stopped. When they went to the hospital for checkup and they found that the fetus was dead. So they started, since it was the eighth month of pregnancy, they started a normal uh, labor procedure to get the fetus out of the mother's womb. So they started giving, um, they started inducing the pain 
by giving hormonal injections and etc but there was no response the uterus was not responding to any of their medications and no pain started the uterus has become a complete inertia and the os has become so tight and rigid so this is the condition and here also we need to get the fetus out of the mother so they have waited for more than 24 hours and they have now fixed the surgery for the mother so they they want to do a c section and remove the baby so we had hardly some 6 to 7 hours to make the patient better so what can we do now any suggestions shall we give the same cantharis to this case good colophyllum why colophyllum can you explain why colophyllum or shall we give cantharis again to this case to expel the fetus out of the mother's womb any other suggestions yeah so the rubric i considered was in nerve poetry pregnancy fetus motion had ceased and you can find only one remedy yes good it is inertia of uterus with rigidity of os only one remedy was colophyla so pregnancy parturition uterus atony and pregnancy os rigid all these three symptoms were major no other severe uh, alarming infectious symptoms or uh, no, nothing was there in this case and so colophyllum was given after taking colophyllum in water again the pain started the the, the normal labor process initiated and it, the dead fetus came out as a normal delivery and the mother was saved from surgery so how to understand these cases so the last two cases which we described were in the same condition almost with the pathology but you can see their presentations were different one was with severe alarming infectious symptoms and another one was very calm inertia so this is how we have to understand and practice homeopathy see usually in such pregnancy state we used to have our own theories or some traditional habits of giving pulsatilla for a normal delivery colophyllum for the um relaxation of uh, the os we will have some fixed ideas but we should always remember that every disease presentation has its own individuality and a remedy should be given only when there is a strong indication for that remedy as we see in this last two cases the presentations were different and according to that presentation from that peculiar symptom we selected the rem remedy accordingly once the remedy has been given the cure has started in minutes so this is what 
we have to understand learn and practice in our clinic so in every stages as we saw early in puberty marriage pregnancy menopause in all these stages of life we have women has been affected in all these four axes which is called the psycho neuro endocrine immuno axis so this this governs the entire individual as a whole so in in a female in her <clears throat> life changes all these axes are affected at the same time so we always should approach every case in a holistic and individualization manner so our individualization should, should be at the holistic level so this is the point which i wanted to insist here so with these cases we can learn many things as from the nerve repertory we have a special chapter for pregnancy where you can see very minute peculiar characteristic symptoms has been listed with their remedies so even in such a critical cases the repertories can be used is an another point where we can do a principled homeopathic practice even in such acute cases with repertories i want to recommend these two books for the beginners one is the change of life in women by jc barnett and the other one is the acouchers emergency manual of homeopathy in pregnancy actually the second case the, the colophyllum was treated by referring this tingling's manual after that i searched for the remedy in nerve repertory after the confirmation i gave the remedy so there are some good works and this obstetrics and this uh, pregnancy area of homeopathy is not effectively used by many of our homeopaths even female homeopaths are not taking much cases in this aspect but our pioneers have worked a lot if you see the repertory if you if you can see the uh, nerve repertory you can see very specific symptoms which i can show you how precisely uh, they have worked you can see a dedicated chapter for pregnancy in nerve repertory can you see that hello yes yes yeah you can see here pregnancy abortion many many symptoms of the stages of labor abortion many can disposition to abortion you can see here see disposition to abortion at third or fourth month they have given epitorium purpureum so this this symptom we can see commonly in our practice people will come with every third or fourth month i am getting about that see frequently and early ovum expelled at every menstrual period causing sterility with good numbers you can see
the placenta retained you have three remedies here sabina sepia and veridrum also these are all very commonly encountered problems in in labor yes this chapter will be very useful when we are treating a pregnant women in our clinic you can see every minute symptoms you can see here see anus burning in pregnancy capsicum was the only remedy has been given and you can see there will be breathing difficulty difficult from upward nasomica you cannot imagine whether this remedy could have this symptom so when you when you use this nephropathy you can be more confident in prescribing the remedy since they are repeatedly clinically verified and they are mostly of proved symptoms so you can use this remedy in a very confident manner so this is how we can use repertory in emergency conditions also yeah so when we try to use the available tools effectively in our practice we can treat any kinds of cases and also you can you can just relate all those things to the contemporary ideas also for example if you take the uh, case of colophyllum what has occurred in that case there is a sudden stoppage of movement of the fetus and there is complete loss of function of the uterus the uterus has been gone into a inertia state and the os has been tight tightly closed so when you look in deeper into this remedy colophyllum comes under berberidaceae family okay i can show you this. When you look into the remedy colophyllum, it comes into the Berberidaceae family, which has the sensation see, it's a psychotic miasm, which has the sensation. sudden change intense change rapid change shift sudden transformation certainly sure surely for sure absolute constant persistent steady stable so the change will be very sudden sudden intense rapid changeability at both physical and mental level so the reaction will be confusion dullness prostration of mind confusion of identity confusion from interruption so everything will be just stand still and it falls under super class 1 which has the characters which has the future of it is completely closed inside as like the os is so rigid and it is closed that the fetus doesn't want to come out so this is the state this exactly the future of this super class 1 so this is how we can understand the remedy at a deeper level also can you understand? Any questions?
so so this is how we are going to learn the both traditional and contemporary methods and how to apply them in our practice so this is what we are going to learn in our forthcoming classroom to clinic sessions um thank you so much any questions are welcome So we had one question uh, regarding the previous uh, remedy, Baraita okay. Sulf. Yeah. What was the question? Baraita Sulf in water dose for three months was given. How you have? Can you please elaborate? I don't understand. One pill of Sulf. One pill of Baraita Sulf two hundred in hundred ml of water. Ask the patient to suckers it for ten times. One cap of the medicine solution should be dissolved in hundred ml of drinking water, and it should be taken as a whole every night. So every day the patient has to do ten suckers of the medicine solution. Then one cap of the medicine solution should be dissolved in hundred ml of water. and i will ask the patient to take it daily night or weekly once according to the indication we receive from the patient clear the water dosing the potency selection is a very huge topic which needs a deeper understanding with a logical study and we will be dealing all these chapters in our course thank you so much sir for such interesting cases and such different understanding of the case if any one of you has any question they can put it in the chat box we also have uh, the quiz link provided in the chat box for you you have to answer it uh, do all the four questions correctly you will be getting a 50% discount on the upcoming course from classroom to clinic this uh, uh, discount would be valid till monday so you have to answer within a day and submit it anyone has any other question regarding the session can put them in the chat box or unmute themselves and ask uh, uh. so we have a question for you dr charles sir in colophylum case how the mind rubrics were taken no i haven't taken any mind rubrics for that case since it it was an very acute uh, emergency condition i just took the state of the physical state of the patient whatever the symptoms presented at that time and converted them into rubric and i gave it i hope this answers your question any other question i don't see any other question in case you have any question you can just write in the chat box sir one more question for you in baraita self case no many... baraita self baraita self case is not the intrauterine death case it was an hypoplastic uterus where the growth of the uterus was retarded so after giving beta cell the uterus has matured and grown up and the girl started to menstruate 
I think you fetus, got confused between the two cases. Yeah. yeah. The fetus expelled happened in both the cases within one hour after prescribing the remedy. I think uh, we are done with today's session. I hope it was informative enough for all of you. And you can expect a lot more. This was just a glimpse of the course. And you can expect a lot more in the upcoming course. I hope everyone will fit the quiz form. And those who are interested can contact us and join and register for the course. We'll be starting with our first session on the 13th of March. In case you have any queries, feel free to contact us and register for the course and uh, refer anyone who can benefit from this course. Thank you so much. I would like to thank all the four speakers for joining us today and sharing their cases and experiences. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Charu and Kamlesh for sharing your cases. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. We look forward to see you all again.